this is Judah Atkins, and I am thrilled to be with you again. And I just want to be able to share with you today to let you know how important you are to God. You know, uh, we, we uh, become important to family members, or maybe you have people in your life that you're not so important to. But I want you to know today that you are so important to God, that you're in his thoughts and in his heart. And he wants each and every one of us to know him and the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I just want to read a little bit before I get into my lesson today. But I want to welcome you. This is the season that we that we uh, really take notice of the birth, death, birth of Christ, or the birth of Christ and His resurrection. That we realize that it just shouldn't be at the holidays that we think of Jesus. I know many of us have been so covered up with situations, but let the light shine in your heart today. And let him be God to you today. And if you have any needs, well, you know that you can go to him. It says, I told, spoke of scripture last week, that I look into the hills, what's coming to my help. Well, where's your help come from? It comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. And I just better read this scripture here. That... Um, I thought it was good. The Lord just kind of led me to this morning before we get into our lesson. It says, now, therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, <laughs> that my people is taken away for naught? Are you taken away? Are you letting things take you away from me for naught? That doesn't even count. Is just foolishness. They that rule over thee make thee to howl. Yes, so many are howling today. But we have to look to God, saith the Lord, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Or you don't have to be cussing him out to be blaspheming him. You do know that, right? <clears throat> that you can deny him place in your heart, his word place in your heart, where you're not giving respect unto him and that you're not listening to him say to you, you're my child. You don't have to think in those directions. You don't have to let yourself get down on the inside and erase my name from your, from your life and get mad at me because things maybe you think are not moving quick enough or things maybe are just not up to snuff according to yours to your standards, but you have to know that is also, um, be careful that you don't blaspheme him, him in that way. But he says, therefore, my people shall know, respect my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doeth speak. Behold, it is I. Do not worry. It is I that speak. And he speaks through his word, through prayer. He speaks to your heart when you think nothing's going on. He is a good Lord. And his mercy covenant is fully embraced for those that believe him. And it goes on to say, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace. Are we bringing good tidings? And publishing peace, not just at Christmas time, but all throughout the year. That bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Amen. Our God reigneth. And let's always remember that through thick and thin, through up and down, that our God reigneth. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for each and every person that may hear this lesson. Lord, that you open hearts, that you, uh, you said to take heed what we hear and how we hear. That, Lord, that we take time to listen to your word. 
that be that we're like a Mary that we set at the feet of Jesus and that we begin to fill up our vessels and then that we pour out the anointing and the blessed word upon those around us that you lead us to that you tell us to uh, to go to and father I thank you right now in Jesus name <clears throat> For this wonderful lesson uh, in Proverbs on wisdom, and oh, how we need wisdom today. Let us take, let us take notice, let us heads up, realize that we need such wisdom today. And Lord, practical wisdom, prudent wisdom, that Father, that we are sagacious, sharper than a battle axe that nothing gets by your children, that, Father, that we are able to catch what the enemy is doing and put him down quickly, and, Lord, that you make haste to help us, deliver us, and bring health and prosperity to us in Jesus' name. Now, we know that's our inheritance, isn't it? All the things, God's people have an inheritance, and Jesus died for that inheritance. And I was listening to uh, Miriam this week, on give, and if you get a chance to go hear her teaching on the, uh, the inheritance, is our inheritance, and that we have it now, and we need to be able to use it. But so many are stuck like I believe Jacob was stuck for a short time and that he uh, let everything around him. He felt like, I guess he deserved what was going on and he never pressed in maybe the way he should, even though God gave him favor and there was still the inheritance working on his behalf <clears throat> because of Laban's shenanigans. But, you know, God wants us to enter into that full inheritance and to know we don't have to go to the world for what we need. We want, God wants us to come to him. He has sent the Holy Spirit in our heart crying, Daddy, Daddy, Abba, Abba, Daddy, Daddy. That's what that means. Daddy, help me. I'm your child. Don't forget about me. And you know what? He says, bring to remembrance things to him. He loves it. He loves for you to bring his word to mind. And he loves to be able to sit there with you and fellowship with you and say to you, well, this is some, a question you've had in your heart. I remember Kenneth Hagin saying he was believing God for healing when he was on, when he was flat on his back. And what happened was, is that he uh, prayed and asked God to heal his body, but then he got into the scriptures. And he began to get a hold of the scripture, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that, that what he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. And he said, Lord, as far as I can tell, I'm believing you. I'm putting the word in action. But he said, uh, so if you would say that I'm not believing you, I would, he said, I wouldn't agree with that. And so the Lord told him, you know, you do believe as far as you know. We have to get into God's word and let God begin to lead us in maybe things that we have, we quite don't get a hold of, of we're quite, not quite fully embracing it. But the Holy Spirit is here to lead, guide, and direct us, to teach us. And he will say, you need this part. You're forgetting about this. So I just want to let you know that anything we need is right here. If we are stuck in a situation, we don't know what to do. It's right here. You will begin, first of all, to fellowship with your father. The next thing you know, you're having a wonderful time. And your mind is absent from the problem for just a bit. And the next thing you know, you know what to do. Something just comes into it. It's like the Holy Spirit just says, there, 
I can get a place I can just squeeze in right there what you need to do. Well, I hope that encouraged you today. And I hope this teaching encourages you because it is a teaching that we need voiced in all of our lives. And so many times we overlook it. Last week or two weeks ago about that, I gave you, you had a better idea than I did that uh, the, the title of it was. And it is speaking about wisdom. So please go listen to that. I'm going to go over a little bit of it today because of the other things the Lord wants me to share. But please go back, listen to that and let your friends listen to it. Get a hold of people and hit the like button if you like it. And, you know, because I guess that's how they rate things. But anyways, blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to get over into <clears throat> Proverbs. And I was sharing with you last week about the, <clears throat> the principal thing. Principal. What's principal mean? Voice in time or order. It's the highest or first in rank of authority or of importance relating to, uh, to a principal. It is a, like a chief or head or who takes the lead. So this is the principal thing that we have to have. And God tells us the principal thing is to have wisdom. And with wisdom, you get understanding. And let me just get over here because I want to read the scripture to you. I've got it marked in my Bible. Excuse me. And he says here, <clears throat> To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. We're going to talk a little bit more about those things today. To give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. Now, did you hear that? A wise man will hear and he won't stop there. He wants to increase in learning. I want to know more about this. This is what God is talking about when you hunger and thirst after righteousness. When you hunger for the answers from him. Not from the world, the world to give you a humpteen answers, but they will not be in line with the word of God. They will not be what you need. It may sound good, but you know what? Before you know it, you realize that that's not, it's leading in the wrong direction. So be wise, go back and listen to this teaching. You had a better idea than me. And I was talking about God has a better idea than you. <clears throat> But so many times we think we have the better idea, but we don't, do we? That's right. A wise man will hear and will increase in learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Now, he will be wise enough to hear out and listen. David was wise. It said when David was in a situation with Saul and all of the stuff was being stirred up, uh, in in his in the presence of Saul and all these things going on that David knew wasn't right. It said with wisdom he he exited the room. He got out of the way because he knew where it was going. He had an understanding, uh, prudence. He could see where the the thing was going that it wasn't good with Saul. Right. <clears throat> And it says, to attain unto wise counsel, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. If you want to really begin to understand things that you might not have understood before, that is like dark sayings to you, that doesn't make sense to you. Even Jesus, he was so wise. He spoke in parables. He gave it a person <clears throat> stories, he better use simplicity with fishing and, and different things like that that had a spiritual meaning. So we want to understand what God means about certain things 
that we read, that we have an understanding of them. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And I'm, I'm, I hate to say it, but I want to say this. We have, uh, even in the body of Christ, we have been quite the fool. And that we haven't followed certain things that we know. <clears throat> Voice things for us that will help us, that will lead us and guide us and keep us sound-minded. Oh, how we need to be sound-minded and stable, have stability in our lives. And you find when you do have stability and you're sound-minded, Next thing you know, God is using you with those that are teetering and can't grasp or get a hold of things and maybe are in doing, uh, seeking wisdom or seeking the answer and even soothsaying. I'm telling you, I cannot believe it. Me, me and my husband went to South Carolina, Rock Hill, and the Lord led us there. And uh, the, the city was tied up with a palm reader. She was at the entrance of the city when you entered the city. And people, because they weren't reading their Bible, even in the body of Christ, were going to her. And God began to deal with us to begin to write about, get the information out. We even took it to the paper that how God dealt with those things. And that they, we don't go to those things. Uh, God had them destroyed. And so here and take it. God has every answer you need. Anyways, we had people come to us, say, to us and say, we didn't know that. Well, why didn't you know that? Because you weren't reading your Bible. The Bible, we have to be studious. And seek the word of God of what he says. Well, the next thing you know, it woke up many Christians, believe me. And we started having to counsel a bunch of them. And even ones that have went to these people and take, took their children. The next thing they know, they were having seizures. And they didn't know what to do about it. So we had to pray with people. But they were tangled up in this town with all of this stuff. So, but praise God, God got the victory. And so you and I can have the victory, but we have to have wisdom. And I'm going to read to you today so I don't miss anything. So it would be safe to say wisdom, God's wisdom must come voiced because it is the highest in rank authority, importance, of importance. To be successful in, in our life, we must seek out his wisdom. Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. I just read that to you. Voiced, voiced. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. It will open your understanding. Proverbs 2, <clears throat> One, it says, okay, I just read that. We don't want to be fools, but we want to seek the Lord. Proverbs 21, 2 says, every way a man, every way of a man is right in his own sight, but the Lord pondereth the heart. It is the issues of the heart the Lord looks at. It is your heart that God deals with, your spirit and heart. Heart and spirit are interchangeable. It is your spirit that is the candle of the Lord. It is your spirit that is like him. That is who he communicates with. And then when you renew your mind, you have to understand when you're a new creature, you have the spirit of your mind. And by renewing it, by getting in touch with God and connected, you have, you have a working knowledge as well. It is the source center our spirit is. And the, with the word of God, the heart or spirit of man that God communicates with. And he can tell immediately if we are relying on, 
on our heads or our hearts to lead us. What we are putting into our lives is what we will operate from. If we are putting trashy things into our life, things in our lives, we will produce or reap the product built into us. When we keep putting the wrong thing into us, and also, you can't keep going to the same people that, you know, asking people things and you, you know, you're just hoping perhaps one day something will dawn on you and you think it's you when it's not. The, it is also the counsel that is not giving you the, the answers or not helping you. If we are put, putting trashy things in our lives, we will produce or reap the product built into us. This is why building God's word into us. And that you and I become a wise woman or man. Jesus said, build your house on the rock. Wisdom, his words. And when trouble times comes, you will have an inner resources to draw from. Isn't that good? Build your house on the rock upon the word of God, upon stability. God made the worlds. He framed the worlds. He made us. He knows exactly how to keep us steady and how what to give us when we need it. And when we go to him for the wisdom, he will give it to us. But we have to ask, it says, not wavering back and forth, but to believe that his wisdom is pure from above and that he will give it us. But we can't ask one day and say, I guess he didn't answer me. God's wisdom, sometimes it takes a little while to bring it forth. For one thing, how much time are you spending before him where he can get your attention, where he can begin to explain, to share with you? He says, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2, to know wisdom again, let's, let's just take this into our heart and mind today to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and equity, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. He'll recognize wise counsel. The uh, wise counsel to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the word of the wise and dark sayings. Wisdom, prudence, to understand prudence, which is a practical wisdom. Quickness of apprehension. The penetrating consideration, which precedes action. It precedes action. You understand it and you go into action with it intelligence, sagacious. Now, we shared about this last week, but I think that it's good to share it again because people think, oh, that's a difficult subject. The devil tells them it's a difficult subject. Uh, that isn't what I want to hear. I want to hear a quick, quick thing. But I tell you, once you take time to get God's wisdom, oh, it goes a long ways, folks. And you will not be running around looking for answers from man that is not doing what you need. Sagacious, sagacious means to perceive keenly, sharp as a battle axe. And I shared last week as a battle axe and more, they used to sharpen those battle axes. And oh, they were so sharp, you could cut yourself with them. When they threw them, they could cut a man almost in two with them. Wise, quick in apprehension, acute in discernment, shrewd. Wise, sharp in discernment, practical consideration, planning for the future. And God is a planner. He plans for the future. And this is, a, this is prudence here. This is a scripture that shows you how prudent God is. And it says in Luke 1, 17, this is when he sent John the Baptist to prepare a way for Jesus. And it says, 
or prudent is true translation of it. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, because he did come in the power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. We must in this time also turn the disobedient to the wisdom. Wisdom of the just, wisdom of the just to save this generation. Jesus planned ahead when he was sending Jesus, he had for a forerunner. And John the Baptist was a great forerunner because he spent time with God in the desert. He didn't hear man, he heard God. And when he come on the scene, boy, he had repent and be baptized. The Lord's coming. There's one coming after me. My sh the, his shoelaces, I'm not worthy to untie or tie. He began to herald that Jesus, the Messiah that you've been hearing about, is coming. And here he is. And he saw him walk toward him to the river Jordan and asked to be baptized. Then it says the dove, like the spirit of God, landed on him like a dove. It didn't say it was, a, it was like a dove, maybe in the shape of a dove, because they understood dove represents peace, peace and goodwill to all men. Amen. So here, this is wisdom, God's wisdom. His prudence, you see it in action here. He brought forth a forerunner to foretell about Jesus. Here Jesus appears and he tells, this is the one that we have been hearing over and over that shall come, that will bring salvation unto us. We must in this time also turn the disobedient to the wisdom. We're entering into a time now where pastors, men of God, people of God have to begin that Jesus is saying, I'm coming back. And it's in the same way that he's got, that there's got to be his body has got to be prepared to receive him. Plus, he wants to bring others that have not maybe heard or others that have uh, gotten away from him or whatever. But the thing is, it's time for us to make way for the returning of Jesus. Now, we know he's going to return. We won't know the time or the hour, but we know the things that he said, how the end times would begin to come together. So, the wisdom of the just to save this generation. We have a generation that Jesus wants saved. And it is clear to see that the devils had them long enough. It is time to be prudent, pastors, it's evangelists, teachers, and begin to say, hey, God, Jesus is coming back and he is it wants these young people heralding his name with that energy, the same energy they 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 lifted up the devil and all these devilish songs and everything. He wants that same energy and they're going to have it, believe me, because when they get free, oh my goodness. And it says, we must be prudent, practical, and deliberate to think carefully and attentively, to plan, to weigh be balanced in our minds. We may even have to have some formal discussions with pastors, with one another about what we see, how things are coming together, what our, we must plan with the Holy Spirit as we're directed by the power of God to begin to see these things culminated. The enemy has been running havoc. You think God doesn't want to bring people on the scene with a plan? Oh my goodness, he will, and if men of God will quit uh, dividing us through all these other things, and we begin to put the gospel first, Jesus, every denomination can come together with, and put Jesus in the center. 
We may not agree on everything and we won't agree, but we know that we put Jesus in the center, that we can agree that he is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the one that died for us, saved us, and he one day will resurrect us like he, give us a new body. It's said in the twinkling of an eye, and we should be jumping up and down and shouting that we do not have to kowtow and be under this hardness and this ugliness. And it says, <clears throat> and we can't be jumping to conclusions about everything either. Some things are starting to form and we must wait on God. So we have much to lose in this hour. We must consider we can lose a whole generation. Pastors, are you thinking about that? My husband and I pastored, like I've shared with you. I thought about so many things like that. How do I reach more people? How do I tell them that, listen, this is, live your life for Jesus. You'll have a life that is, I can't imagine living any other way. I can't imagine going to any other place. I've got to run to Jesus. My father, daddy, daddy. Yes, and it says, we must consider we can lose a whole generation of youth, young people to the devil if God's people are not wise. And this is what we've almost done because the churches have become so lackadaisical and so diluted and just, we have to catch fire, people. People are not wise discerning their decisions to follow. They follow a religious form and love or to love and prepare this generation for the Lord. We cannot, we cannot follow this religious form that we've been following. We have to have, there's got to be men and women that come forth. The word is in their mouth and it is like fire and it's going to begin just to be spoken that is going to begin to fall on ears that are open, that are praying and asking God for, use me, help me to understand these things and that I can discern properly. But you get in the word of God on wisdom and you will have discretion. You will begin to have what you need to discern properly. He is depending on us to preach the gospel. To save this generation. We cannot be any longer bashful. We cannot. We cannot stand back. And let the devil have it all folks. He is depending on us. To preach the gospel. We are in this, this time of the age. And time we live in. To be ambassadors. Of goodwill. To those the enemy has had too long. He has stolen so many with drugs, socialism, teaching them how to be violent, turning their minds into thinking they are just to be like a robot, unfeeling and unloved, unimportant. That is so far from what God wants. But this is the way so many young people feel. I talk to them all the time and they, you know what they deal with? Rejection. They said, if we're not rejected by our parents, we're rejected by the social, uh, what churches even think that they should be like. They want to constantly push them into a box and they want to calm them down. They want to tell them how to believe and what to believe, but they are feeling rejected. They are feeling like when is it going to be that I'm loved, that I'm cared for, that I'm treated like I have a brain? And I know we've looked at this generation and thought they don't have a brain in so many areas, but they do. They're just crying out, saying, help me. And they're acting out because they're, they, have, they don't have parents that care for them. They get on drugs and everything, and then they think they're unreachable. But Jesus wants to reach them. And the love of God and patience is what it's going to take, folks. It's a hard ask. It is to ask. But it's got to be done. No, we have the word 
for wisdom, another word is Sophia, meaning in the insight, in, just meaning is the insight into the true nature of things, the ability to discern modes of action with a view to their results. While Sophia is also theoretical, It is depending on speculation or theory. Hypothetically, it is being more visionary than practical. But I say today, hy hypothetical means they have an idea or statement that they assume that doesn't have facts. But I think that it's speaking for itself and that we as men and women in the body of Christ have to have both. We have to be visionaries and we have to be practical. That we have to, we don't want to assume, but we want to, when we see a whole generation going in the wrong direction and that we're going to lose them, that we have to begin to get a hold of ourselves and pray that God gives us that vision to see this, this generation saved. And to be practical you cannot start changing them because you want to change them. They just want to be loved and they're going to come the way they are and it's going to be raw. And they may even have, there's still their raw language. Only thing they know is something happened to them. But God is trying to prepare a people so that when I see generation, I mean, I see Young people coming in groves where the Holy Spirit has come upon them and they have changed. What happened to me? I don't know what happened to me. I've got to find out what happened to me. All they know is they begin to break and cry and they begin to be free. So we can have to have practicality. We can't try to change them overnight. We need both to be able to have, to accomplish in this end time, to have preparation. We must be able to see clearly, to have a vision of God to work toward, and practical wisdom to, to ground it. To understand we have a big job on our hands, we must be able to see properly what is right, to see justice and righteousness, judgment that our actions that, that that we do action and decision making that is in line with God's word. For, first off, we are to love others as ourselves. We all pass judgment of people and things without, like God, seeing the whole matter or understanding the root of the matter. And we're all guilty of it. And I have to repent. Sometimes I just see certain things a certain way. And the Lord said, listen, you're just seeing it in the wrong, in a, in just a small light. <clears throat> First Corinthians 2, 14 says, the natural man receiveth not the things of God or the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Many of you today, it might even sound foolishness to your ears because you're so used to depending on this world and yourself and you've gotten away from the word of God. But God's, trust me, this is where you need to go back to. That his, that you are not in your natural man, the understanding, but you are filling your spirit up with God and his word and with wisdom. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You cannot know God's word by trying to analyze it with your brain. We are to examine and go to God for his instructions. In verse 15, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. He knows how to judge things by the word of God. But he does not judge man, and he even in himself, that he has to put himself against the word of God. God is the spirit. He knows all things. His children are to seek wisdom, for they can judge correctly when spiritual wi wisdom is imparted. 
even though they as a person cannot be the judge by applying the word of God to our decisions and understanding, then we can spiritually discern the injustice and be practical. In other words, if you see injustice and do not try to bring it into light, the light of God's word, we will be responsible for that. When we see things going wrong and we as Christians know better and we stand by and let that, that situation go on, those things God will ask us, why, why did you not say anything? Why did you not represent me? Why did you not speak up and say, no, no, this is not God. This isn't how God operates. The world today the, have the people, even of God's people, thinking he is just a ding-dong running around pounding people into the ground. That isn't your father. Not even an earthly father that has any worth as a father does anything like that. So you and I, we have to bring, we have to speak up for justice for those that are not not getting justice or speak the words and say, no, no, that's, that's unfair. That's not right. And it says <clears throat> in verse 16 and first Corinthians two says, for who hath known the mind of Christ that he may instruct him? We can't, but we have the mind of Christ. We can't instruct Jesus. He's the head for the body, but he says we can have the mind of Christ, that we can begin as he functions, that we have an understanding and that we function and flow and become ha having more of his mind all the time in situations in our lives, in our daily lives. The mind of Christ can know what he would do and the action that is needed to bring peace, etc., we have to begin to pray and ask God, give me your mind, Jesus, that I can begin to be a part of bringing a solution. By spiritual wisdom, remember God's people are the ones who are to bring God's will into the earth. If you and I don't, who is? And to bind the devil's work. We are the glue that holds everything steady, being the arbiter of God's will. When Satan is allowed to undermine God's will, he will. It is us that will not allow it. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven. He says, you bind it up when you see the enemy working. And I will bind it. What we allow will be allowed in heaven. If we bind the works of the devil and render him inoperative, and we speak those words, we render you inoperative in the name of Jesus. This is not the will of God. You're bringing evil into this. God immediately goes to work on the situation when we understand the authority that we have. When God sends us into a situation, he, we know when he begins to send us in that we have to operate and start taking our authority over things, not over people and people's wills. We can't take authority over that. Uh, there's no way. But when we see spiritually the enemy operating that is affecting our lives and affecting the, our government and that, that we can begin to pray and take authority and say, no, no, God's will be done, not your will. He's already spoke those things. So you're just reiterating and speaking in authority what he's told you. He says for you to go speak with new tongues, to take authority over the devil. But oh, you can't take authority over someone's will and somebody that's not willing to, to work with you. If somebody's not, not, you're just wasting your time. But we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we allow will be allowed in heaven. If we bind the works of the devil and render him an operative, God immediately goes to work on the situation. He also looses angels to make sure we are protected and able to carry through his righteous judgments 
or acts, whatever he sends you to do, whatever the situation you find yourself in. Religious people or religion will not operate in this. God believes in equity, not according to the world or what they consider equity. It will always be in balance, unbalanced. The scales will always be tipped in their direction. Equity is rights of a person to see that things are done in prudence, practical, fair, and impartial. But when things are just falling in one direction, that's not fair or impartial. You cannot call that equity or fairness. And it says that to begin with, true equity comes from God. You hear that? You understand that? He is always impartial. When we do what is right, he is fair to make sure you are treated right and fair. He never looks at your status in society or goes by man's ideas of who he thinks is worthy or worthily of receiving things. Yes, he abides by the law, his laws, not some crazy man-made law. He abides by the law of love, the law, the law of grace, and that which he's given us. <clears throat> he walks within the framework of that covenant that he's made with us. God all always goes by what is just and right. Man may pass judgment because of others' lies. What you've heard, you've let your ears hear. But God's warned us not to do that. <clears throat> and if we hear things that's not right, he says, come to me. I'm able to show you what's going on. I'm able to show you the heart of man. It says, who's worth, or yes, he abides by the law. Okay, God always goes by what is just and right. Man may pass judgment because of others' lies, but God will make sure if you are his kid to bring the truth to light. Oh, it may not come in your time. You want it now. We always want justice now. But God does wonderful things. He does more than one thing, and he may use your circumstance to really nail something down in a person that may be causing problems with a lot of people. But it will come when God and you get the full satisfaction of the matter. In verse 4, Proverbs, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. Verse 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Now, I know I'm repeating that, but it's, it's worth repeating. Subtility means to be shrewd. And Genesis 3.1 is a good example. Now, the serpent was more subtle, sly in design, artful, cunning, or cunningly devised a plan. He, Satan, was acute, meaning penetrating in intellect. He is also discerning. He can discern when we are not fully convinced. Do you understand that? When you are not fully convinced of the word, you're not fully embracing and believing your father when he tells you the truth. You always know those people. Somebody will come along and say, oh, I've been there. I've done that. And believe me, you don't want to go that, that way. And they'll say, yeah, but this is different. No, it's no different. It's the same thing, only maybe he's got a different name to it. He, Satan, was acute, meaning penetrating an intellect. He is also de discerning. He can discern when we are not fully convinced on the, the when we're on the fence about decisions, etc. And he begins to devise a plan. He will color coat things, even come at you with a smooth, and even a false compassion. You see, it's so, you know what? It's okay. God understands. You can go ahead and sin. You can go ahead and do your thing. God understands. He won't be mad at you. Does that remind you of something? He was more subtle than any beast, it said, of the field. He was stealth. He made an effort to conceal the trueness. 
it, he was stealth in his actions, sneaky, which God had made. And he said unto the woman, yes, he agreed with Eve. Yes, God said, ye shall not eat of the, of the tree, every tree of the garden. In verse two, it says, and the woman said unto him, the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Now, God didn't say that. He didn't say, neither can you touch it. So de the devil went to work on it. Aha, subtle, wise. He's seen that she added to God's word, added something that God did not say. So what did he do? It said, now Satan had a hook. He heard something he could use. He didn't say, if you touch it, you will die. Subtility, shrewd. He got her to touch it. And when she didn't die, he coaxed her into eating it. You see how he works? He won, but Christ came with a plan to recover all his father lost. Jesus was always saying, take heed what you hear, not hear. He's saying back here because the, the woman didn't hear very well, did she? She added to God's word, take heed to what you hear and how you hear. Do you think he had in mind these things when he said that? Take heed how you're hearing. Take heed what you're hearing. And how are you hearing that? He says, <clears throat> do not let Satan twist my doctrine because you only hear what you want to hear. Verse four said, and ye shall, the serpent said, and ye shall not surely die. Satan heard God when he warned Adam. He was in on it. He heard. Satan knew they would be cut off spiritually like he was due to his rebellion. In verse 5, it said, For God doeth know what is in, that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Open to what? Good, evil and good. You can be either. You can be either. You can be free to follow me, is what he's saying, or we can seek out sin and, and experiment with it. We will be as gods, he says. You can be like me. You can check out the, the lay of the land. And you know what? We'll be like gods. We'll call our own. We'll make our own decisions. God won't rule over your spirit anymore. But he didn't tell them he would be the one that would drop his nature off in them and that they would become subject to him because that's what God said. If you eat of that tree, you're going you're gonna to lose out. We can mark our own destiny. If you don't want to follow after God, you can surely follow me, he says. Subtility, shrewd, a liar. Satan knows his destiny. He hates God and anything God sets in motion or makes he his will work to destroy. He will work to destroy God's will. She didn't need to know all of this to rule and reign with God. She only needed to obey God. If Eve and Adam had listened and ate of the tree of life, they would have been given Satan, given Satan place after they eat of the tree of good and evil. So God had to run. They would have stayed in that. There would have been nothing that could have changed their that position. They would have been like God, not gods. They could have been like the only true God is what Satan was saying. You can be like him. Listen, I, I was with him and you can just be like him. You don't have to follow those r silly rules to be like him. Shrewd. So get, he's talking 
talk, talk, talk. He continues to talk, tries to talk over God. You're in a situation and you're not going to God's word or you don't have enough word on it. He's just constantly talking, talking, trying to get you to go in the wrong direction because he knows it's going to take you a while to get out of it, maybe. And it may take you a little while after you get mad and blame God when you know God had nothing to do with it. It was you and your will and knowing that God told you not to go in that direction. But now you're mad at yourself, so why not be mad at God at the same time? No. We have to come to ourselves. It's almost like people have no sense of themselves from top to bottom. They're not thinking farther than a, th a short little thread and come with conclusions that are just erroneous and make no sense and sure not leading you in a path of righteousness, justice, or fairness or leading you in a path of peace and prosperity in him. So we learn <clears throat> such creative power that we could be given far more than Satan before he fell. God has made us new creations in him. Have you ever thought about this? You have the greater one that is in you. You have the creator that is inside of you and me. We, when we accepted him, and he is well able to create Make things bad, ugly, beautiful. He's able to recreate your thinking even by, you, by the word of God and by you getting into his word and letting him begin to lead and direct you. He can turn an ugly situation into a ministry, into a beautiful thing. But we have to use wisdom. And I give you some practical wisdom in the first part of the lesson how the world is even talking your money right out of your pockets. You want to go listen to that. You want to listen to these teachings and let God work in your life and do what, what I've shared with you. Go. I've spent two, three weeks on wisdom, just thinking about it and knowing that God has an answer for everything and that if we just go to him first, how it can change everything in our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for each and every one. I thank you, Father, that this lesson went forth, blessed and help people to see through the enemy's, uh, Father, the smoke screen that he's put up before them, maybe. That they sat down, they consider, they become sagacious, sharper than a battle axe, desiring wisdom and prudence and practical wisdom that we don't do crazy things and expect sane things and results. Father, I thank you and praise you that we're going to be uh, put the principal thing foist, that being putting it foist, that we begin to be let that wisdom in us, the practicality, that it begins to... <clears throat> It said wisdom builds her house and begins to build that house in us. That she hews out seven pillars. That she makes it not only a house, but makes it so strong. That if you and I get wisdom voice, that we will not be toppled by the world's wisdom and their trickery and the enemy's shrewd sly. Uh, getting in <clears throat> where we allow it. <clears throat> Father, <clears throat> let us begin to set at your feet like Mary did. Only that we spend time daily getting a scripture, pouring over it. Like the old man that dug for gold, he kept digging and digging and digging until he hit gold. Lord, let us keep digging into your word, into your, Father God, precious love, and to be like you in every way. In Jesus' name, 
Oh, Satan, I bind you from hindering the teach this teaching from when people hear it, that they will understand it in simplicity, that they will follow it, and Father, that it will help those ones that are in trouble to begin to see their way out. Thank you, Father, that you're in us and you're with us to bring success, to bring peace and joy. It says that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. If you are all bogged down, you are not, you do not have that merry heart that God spoke of. You got to go and get the merry heart. Amen. But it says all the other things, sadness dries the bones. When we keep thinking about and we're, we're going in the wrong direction, it just dries us up. We don't want to be a dry twig, do we? No, we want to be a supple tree. It says the righteous are like a tree planted by the waters. And our branches are, branches are huge and our leaves are supple and our roots are going deep. And that's what we want to be. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Again, hit the like button if you like it. Come back and see me. Share with others. Let them know. If you don't share the word of God when you hear it and you don't do anything with it, you must know that you will only be the blame for it. So let's do something with it. Let, when, we, when we buy something, a coffee pot, we use it for its intended use. When we it says, buy the truth and sell it not. He's saying, buy my truth. Don't give it up. Keep going on with me. Hallelujah. Bless you. Come back and see me. Bye-bye.